In this lesson, we'll explore some problems involving perimeter and circumference. All right, let's get started. In example one, it tells us that the perimeter of a regular pentagon is 15x plus 30. And it wants to know, in terms of x, what is the length of one side? Well, we know that we got this perimeter by adding the lengths of all five sides together. And due to the fact that this uh, pentagon is regular, we know that all five sides must be equal in measure. So I'm simply going to work backwards now, and I'm going to take that perimeter, and I'm going to divide it evenly amongst all five sides of the pentagon. So that tells me that the length of one side is 3x plus 6. Number two uses a similar idea, but now they're telling us the length of just one side of the regular octagon, and they're asking us to find the perimeter. So we know that we can find the perimeter by adding the lengths of all the sides, but because this octagon is regular, we know that they're all the same. So I can simply go ahead and I can take the length of that one side, the 2x minus 3, and multiply that times 8. So when I use the distributive property, I find the perimeter of that octagon is 16x minus 24. Number three, they tell us that the perimeter of a square is 64 inches, and they want us to find the area of the square. Well, I know that in order to find the area of the square, I either need to do length times width, or base times height, or side times side, however I want to think about that. But all I have is the perimeter. But I know I found the perimeter by adding the lengths of all four sides together. And we also know that in a square, all four sides are the same. So I'm simply going to take that perimeter of 64 and divide it by 4, and that'll tell me the length of one side. Once I know the length of one side, I actually know the length of all of the sides, because in a square they're all the same. So I can go ahead and plug that into my area formula. And when I do 16 times 16, I find that the area of that square is 256 square inches. Number four is kind of fun because it's a circle problem. It says the area of the circle is 49 pi. They want us to find to the nearest hundredth the circumference of the circle. So on my formula sheet, I have a couple different formulas for circumference. I can either use the formula circumference is equal to 2 times the pi times the radius, or I can use the formula circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. They're actually just two different slightly different ways of saying exactly the same thing. Really, in order to be able to find the circumference, I need to know either the radius or the diameter. And all I know about this circle in the beginning of the problem is that its area is 49 pi. But I do know the formula for finding the area of a circle is area is equal to pi times r squared. And I can substitute that area of 49 pi in for a in the formula is equal to pi times r squared. If I divide both sides on pi or by pi, I find that r squared is equal to 49, making the radius of my circle 7. And if the radius of that circle is 7, it must be that the diameter is 14. So now I can come over here and I can plug that or substitute that into my circumference formula. So pi times 14, or 14 pi. And if this was a question asking for the exact area, I would leave it in terms of pi. But they're not asking me for the exact area. They're asking us to round this to the nearest hundredth. So I'm going to go ahead and get my calculator out, and in my calculator I'm going to plug in 14 pi, and I'll round that answer to the nearest hundredth. So it looks like 43.98. So again, the difference 
between an exact value, which is going to be in terms of pi, and a rounded value, which I get by substituting or plugging into the calculator, is important to note there. Uh, number five says the perimeter of a regular hexagon is 72 centimeters. The length of one side can be represented by 2x plus 4. They want us to find the value of x. Well, if the perimeter of a regular hexagon is 72 centimeters, I know they found that perimeter by taking the length of one side and multiplying it times 6 because a hexagon has 6 sides. So to find the length of one side, I'm simply going to go backwards and divide that 72 by 6. When I divide the 72 by 6, I find that the length of one side is equal to 12. But we're also given that the length of one side in terms of x is equal to this expression 2x plus 4. So I'm going to take the expression 2x plus 4 and set it equal to 12. So if 2x plus 4 is equal to 12, then 2x's must be equal to 8. And each x has to be equal to 4. And now for the last question, which talks about triangle ABC on the coordinate grid. So they're giving us the coordinates of this triangle, and they're asking us to find its perimeter. And then they're telling us to express our answer in simplest radical form. I'm going to, just because it's kind of nice to have a visual picture, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to graph this triangle. And I'm going to say, let's remember that to find the perimeter of a polygon, we take the length and we add the length of each side together. So you might be tempted to, to confuse uh, perimeter with area, but we don't want to confuse this. Remember, area, we use our area formulas to find, whereas perimeter, we're simply going to add the length of each side. So the formula we gave you way back in the beginning of the year for finding the length of any line segment is the distance formula. And that's the formula that we're going to employ when we want to find the perimeter of the triangle. So I'm going to use the distance formula to find the length of each side. And then once I know the length of each side, I'll add them together to find the perimeter. So as with any other formula, when I'm going to use it, the first thing I want to do is write it down, put it down on my paper. And since I'm going to be finding the lengths of all three sides, I'm going to be very careful to explain exactly which side I'm finding first. So I'm going to tell whoever's reading my paper that I'm finding the length of side BC or in other words, the length of the line segment that connects points A and B. And just a reminder that when you substitute or plug this into the calculator, you want to start with the open parentheses first. You should be substituting or plugging this into your calculator as we go along here. just to make sure that you know how to do it. So when I substitute into that calculator, I get the square root of 25, which we can then simplify or reduce to 5. So the length of segment AB is 5 units. Now I want to go find the length of segment BC. So again, I'm going to tell whoever's reading my paper that the segment I'm finding here is segment BC. And similarly to what I did with segment AB, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to substitute or plug that into my calculator. This is still all underneath the square root symbol, so square root of 100, which we know we can simplify to 10. So the length of BC is 10 units. 
And then lastly, I'm going to find the length of segment AC or side AC. And again, I'm going to identify that on my paper to whomever is reading my paper. And again, I'm going to go plug that into my calculator. And this answer, too, is still underneath the square root sign. So square root of 125. And this is where I notice that the directions specify to give my answer as a radical in simplest form. So I've got to go find the largest perfect square that's a factor of 125. And the largest perfect square that's a factor of 125 is 25. It goes in five times. So in simplest radical form, the length of segment AC or side AC is five square roots of five. So lastly, I need to go find the perimeter. The perimeter is going to be the length of all three sides added together. And two of these numbers are like terms and can be combined. But the 5 radical 5, or the 5 square roots of 5, is not a like term and cannot be combined with the other two constants. So the best I can do, the farthest I can go, is to leave it as 15 plus 5 square roots of 5. And again, that is an exact, unrounded answer in simplest radical form. If the directions had said, express to the nearest tenth or to the nearest integer, then I would get my calculator back out and I would substitute those numbers into my calculator and round appropriately. But again, the directions in this instance say to express it in simplest radical form. All right, as always, I want you to take a few minutes and think about what you've seen and heard and done and express the key ideas and important understandings in your own words and see what you can do with the questions on the next page.